today we would be covering another class of uh, learning networks in neural networks and that is uh, competitive learning networks now this competitive learning networks actually works on the concept of winner takes all concept which is uh, basically a form of competition among n participating neurons and uh, there has to be some criteria of declaring which neuron would be the winner a very simple scheme could be the case where uh, the neuron which produces non zero output after the first step out can be declared as a winner and then we can uh, decide what has to be done with that winning neuron a simple scheme could be like we can uh, update the weights of only the winning neuron the rest of the neurons will not get updated so in this manner we can start training our uh, neurons now there can be a number of examples uh, and number of challenges also associated with this kind of learning now one of the challenges could be that if we are going to wait for a neuron to win that is we are going to wait for a neuron to produce a non zero output and uh, wait for a case where all other neurons are producing zero output then this might take a lot of time this might be a long iterative process so simple scheme could be the case where after some fixed number of iterations we can look back and see that which of the uh, participating neuron is producing the highest output or say suppose the lowest output whatever the scheme that we uh, may work for a particular case so we have to find we have to optimize that search criteria also we have to optimize we have to ensure that uh, it does not take too much of time it does not take a lot of iterations to reach out to a convergent state there are uh, many examples uh, which comes under the category of uh, competitive neural network and i'll be covering one such example by the name maxnet neural network which actually does not require any kind of training over here the weights are fixed in nature other networks which also comes under the category of uh, competitive learning networks include learning vector quantization which is uh, an example of supervised, uh, supervised training then we have self organized maps which uh, studied on the examples of unsupervised learning so where we probe the clusters then we have adaptive resonance theory also. so there are ample number of examples which comes or under the study of the competitive neural networks so let us uh, focus our attention only on maxnet neural network for today now in order to determine the closeness of the uh, pattern the input pattern with respect to weight vector see i would be requiring this in order to understand that because what we have is uh, only the input pattern and the weight vector so so uh, a kind of uh, case maxnet is also a kind of clustering kind of algorithm where uh, i doesn't have labeled outputs so i only have your input input patterns and i have the weight vector right and uh, i have to uh, look for a situation where one of the neuron wins so what we can do is we have to find in every iteration what is the distance or what is the closeness of my input vector with respect to my weight vector so in that sense uh, there can be two ways of doing so one is definitely the equivalent space equivalent distance sorry so we can uh, in every iteration we can calculate the equivalent distance between your input pattern and the weight vector right other way can be the dot product between the input vector and your weight vector where the uh, dot product with the largest value would actually signify a small or uh, smallest angle between the input and the uh, in the uh, in the weight vector and therefore we can make a decision about what has to be done in case the uh, distance between the input vector and the weight vector is small or big right so we would be using one such criteria in our example we would be using the equivalent distance concept so maxnet is basically a fully interconnected network with the symmetric interconnections and self loop right and it does not involve any training as i have already made it very clear 
so let us uh, consider a working example so i have taken a small example where we have what five participating neurons y1 to yn you can see a self loop and uh, self loop has been uh, designated as a value of 1 and uh, each unit would be actually visualized as a cluster unit so the task is i would be given an input pattern and i need to declare one of the output neurons to be winner in other words for a given input pattern i have to cluster it into one of these units now as a part of the architecture what we have done is the all the weighted connections in the initial phase we have taken to be uh, inhibitory weights it can be any value so have uh, kept as minus of uh, del right so for a given input new pattern the net modifies the activation still all the units except one attain a zero activation so after every iteration i uh, would be waiting for a situation or in fact uh, after every epoch i would say so we have to wait for a situation till only one of the participating neuron would remain alive would would be producing the non zero value a rest of all the neurons would be producing a zero value right so let us see how this uh, training can be done for a small network like this as i've told that uh, in maxnet there would be no training at all all the weights are kept fixed and to begin with we have kept a minus of tell any value which initially would act as a inhibition right all the interconnection paths have same inhibitory weights as i've told so there would be a rule that needs to be followed for this uh, defining the inhibitory weight in the initial this weight will be taken as a value which is greater than 0 but less than 1 upon m m is what the number of participating units in the net now next uh, this network would be presented with the input vector like this it can be a single uh, um, uh, array vector it can be multi-dimensional array vector depending upon your architecture and uh, based on the initialization then we would be beginning we will to start the frame now we also need to decide upon what would be the activation function for uh, the example that i'll be taking uh, we would be considering a very simple uh, activation function where the net input y n would in case be greater than or equal to zero then the corresponding output would be equivalent to the activation input y n, right otherwise it would be zero see this is a very fairly simple activation function that we would consider here so let us begin with uh, the algorithm and uh, so for a given pattern we need to cluster this among the participating neurons right so as a part of uh, the initialization we will begin with the initialization first as initial part for all the given input patterns we would consider each and every output to be same as that of its corresponding input so let us do one thing we'll take an example first and then we'll cover the algorithm also side by side so here's the example we have taken what four neurons right we have self connection of one and we have taken the inhibition weight of minus 0.2 right so as a part of uh, the starting point and we have taken this inhibition to be 0.2 which follows or which uh, is under this criteria that we have assumed so this is the input pattern that i need to cluster clustering over here means that this input will belong to a go to which of the participating neuron so in other words what i'm trying to do what i'm trying to understand is for this given input pattern i have to decide i have to see this x would be nearer to which of the participating neuron and that is the reason why we were talking about the closeness between the input vector and the weight vector because i do not have any label output here right so as a start, uh, startup process where we would be doing the initialization as a step zero i will initialize all my inputs to the same value as that of uh, sorry i would initialize my net inputs to the cluster units so each and every 
uh, y n would be set to the same value as that or given as a part of the initialization. So y n would be 0.5, y n 2 would be 0.8 and so on, right? Now the first step is what? We have to compute the activation of each cluster in it, right? We have to compute the activation of each and every cluster in it. So since we have already defined the activation function, which was very simple, now, as we all know that activation function that we have defined was the case when if the activation input is positive, then my activation output would be positive, isn't it? That is what we decided. See here, uh, we took the same thing here. If the activation input, that is y n is positive, greater than or equal to zero, it would remain the same value. Otherwise, it would become value zero. So in this case, uh, following this particular rule, since all the activation uh, uh, output in the previous stage is uh, set to be positive value, so the activation inputs would be so the active sorry uh, since all the uh, activation inputs is positive over here, so each and every uh, activation input is positive, and therefore uh, corresponding to each activation input, the activation output will also be positive. Had there been a case like, for example, it, uh, if it had been, suppose, uh, minus 0.3. So in that case, y out 3 would have been 0, right? As per the activation rule that we have defined. So, so in the first iteration, what we have got is all the activation, uh, all the outputs in the first iteration after applying the input is the same as that of your inputs, right? Now, as a step two process, we have to test the stopping criteria. And what is the stopping criteria? It was very simple that only one of the participating neurons should remain non-zero and rest of the participating neurons would become zero. So since this is not the condition which has arrived right now because all the outputs are non-zero values. So we need to remain in the algorithm. The process would uh, remain there. So as a part of step two process, we have to uh, we have test the criteria which becomes false if all the units except one is zero activation then return the unit with non-zero activation if it is could be the case like only one of the output neuron was non-zero and rest of the output were zero then we would have achieved the stopping criteria for this particular case so definitely this would continue so we'll go to step three we'll update the net input to each cluster unit that means we have to update each and every uh, y in y in 2 y in 3 and y in 4 2 uh, so that the next level of processing next level of uh, updation can begin so in that case i need to update so the updation rule is fairly simple that is defined as a part of the algorithm okay, whatever is the output whatever is the output corresponding output i will subtract it from del into summation of y output j where I would leave deliberately the same unit which I'm taking. For example, if suppose I'm taking y in one, so y in out one was the value of 0.5, isn't it? Y in out value was 0.5 over here. So y in out is 0.5, del is 0.2, that is inhibitory weight, and y out is basically what uh, what has been uh, produced. So except 0.5 rest of the weights would be taken into consideration so rest of the weights were what rest of the weights accepting this was 0 0.8 0 0.3 and 0.6 so that we have taken so other than the participating unit for which i'm uh, taking the uh, new uh, activation input we will leave out that particular case and rest of the participating unit would be taken into consideration and this would happen for the next of the case also so after computing uh, this, y in 1 becomes what? 0.16. Similarly, we will be calculating y in 2. In this case, y in 2 was 0.8. So again, we have left out 0.8 and rest of the units have been summed up. So this would produce what? 0.52. So similarly, uh, uh, in a similar manner, we would calculate y in 1, y in 2, y in 3, and y in 4, which comes out to be uh, these values. Uh, one of the values y in 1 becomes 0.16, y in 2 becomes 0.52, y in 3 is 
minus of 0 0.08 and y in 4 is 0 0.28. So again, in the next stage, what we would be doing is we need to compute the activation of each cluster inlet because this was only activation inputs. So after activation input, we have to apply the activation function also. So if you consider carefully, here except for one of the output uh, activation inputs, all of them are positive. See, y in three is only negative, and rest of them are positive. So as per our rule that we have defined for the activation function, which says that the if y in is positive greater than or equal to zero, then the y out would be the same value. Rest it would be zero. So in this case, y in would become Mm, the same y out would remain the same value as equivalent to y in one, and uh, similarly y in two output would become 0.52, but y out three would be zero because this is a negative value, right? And similarly y out four would be a positive value with the same value. So similarly y out becomes 0.16, same value. Only y out three has gone to zero. So now again. We have to move on to this step two and test whether we have achieved the stopping criteria or not. Of course not, because only one of the values is showing zero, whereas the uh, desired case is when only one of the neuron becomes non-zero and rest of the value should get to a value of zero. So again, uh, this process would continue. So again, we have to do what? We have to update each and every unit and we have to find out the new activation inputs. So y in one, we have calculated again. So it is y out one and minus of the same formula that we have used previously. So after calculating this y in one, we are getting a value of zero. In the same procedure y in two, we are getting 0 0.43, y in three is less than zero. It is a negative value which it is returning and y in four is again a positive value. So, so what is the case? So if you can see that I have made a table where we have listed upon each and every y and the corresponding y out. So we reached to iteration two where, what is the uh, case right now? Y out one is zero and y out two is zero. Still two of the neurons are non-zero values. So still we have not reached the uh, convergence stage. So upon providing the third input or the third iteration, we reached to a stage again where our two neurons non uh, they are again positive. So after reaching the stage four, we can see that only one of the neurons is positive and rest of the neurons is giving the value of zero. So in this case, the unit two would be this unit two would be declared as a winner, and then we would say that the given input pattern was clustered into unit two. So this was a fairly simple example. So this is how we can train the MaxNet neural network. Thank you so much.